Dear brothers and sisters, I wish to welcome you to the second Sunday in Ordinary Time. Today, I'd like us to reflect on the gift of encounter, encounter between the divine and the human. I want to share with you, dear friends in Christ, five important points that can help us to appreciate this encounter as a gift from God. I'd like to share with you also the fact that this encounter is for everyone. And I also want to remind you that in this encounter we receive transformation, change, new life, and ultimately salvation. The five ways that i like us to really look at this encounter is number one, I'm going to share with you something about, you know, trying to remind us that God knows us individually. The second thing I'd like to share with you is that God comes to us to encounter us. The third thing I'd like to share with you is that He encounters us in divergent ways. The fourth one I want to share with you is the reason why He encounters us. And the fifth point is, you know, the role we should play, just like Andrew. Now the first one. God knows you. He knows you personally. You know why? Because He created you. Because you are His temple. Because He dwells in you. Go back to the first reading. When God came, He called Samuel by name. He did not say, hey boy, come here. He called Samuel by name. So, God knows your name. He knows where you live. He knows your intentions. He knows your ambitions. He knows your struggles. He knows your challenges. He knows your desires. And look at even the, the, the gospel reading. Jesus, without meeting Simon before, called him Peter. So God knows you because you are his temple as we read in the second reading today. Because St. Paul reminds us that we are the temples of God. Even in the gospel today, the Lord takes note of you. When John pointed Jesus out for his two disciples, Andrew and his companion, it was Jesus who turned around to them. It was Jesus who noticed they were following him. So God knows you. He knows where you come from. He knows your struggles. He knows your challenges. He knows your trials. All your crises are known to God. Nothing about you is hidden from God. So that... The second point I'd like us to reflect on is that God comes to us to encounter us. Since He knows where we are and who we are, He knows the best way to help us. No other person can help you except God. So He comes to us to encounter us. And I say that this encounter is a gift. Look at our first reading. When God came to Samuel to encounter him, in the second reading, we see that God made us as his temple. In the gospel, we see that it was Jesus who turned to address Andrew. I'm trying to recap what I've said just now. In the response to Psalm, David tells us that God stoops to talk to us, to listen to us, and to direct us. So, Pope Francis says to us that there are many ways that God encounters us. It is easy for us to encounter God and for God to encounter us because God gave us from the beginning that gift of being relational. God encounters us in different ways. Remember that every experience that we have can either be a lesson or a blessing so that we can say that God can encounter us even in our crisis. God can encounter us in our struggles, in our trials, in our unemployment, in our sicknesses. God can encounter us in times of sorrows and sadness. I know so many people who became, you know, ardent Catholics, faithful Catholics, just because they had a problem. I'm sure you've heard about near-death experiences. There are those who became Christians today because they had a certain terrible life-threatening encounter or experience. And because of that, they changed. 
There are those who encounter the Lord in their journey traveling. I know a friend who said, from today, I'm going to become a devoted Catholic because I almost died in the airplane. God encounters us in his words. When you turn the pages of the Bible, God is encountering you. In the sacraments, he encounters us. In the Eucharist, as we are going to receive during the Mass, he encounters us. There are so many ways that God encounters us. And as I said in the beginning, he encounters us to change us. Because he knows us. He knows what is best for us. He encounters us to uplift us, to elevate us, to change our identity. And that's what he did to Simon Peter and to his brothers. Whenever you encounter God, I don't know if you have had a certain encounter experience in your life that you can never forget. Just imagine the day you got married. I know you will never forget such an encounter. Imagine the day I was ordained as a priest. I will never forget that encounter. Imagine some pivotal points in your life, that kind of encounter. And that's why it's important, as we listen to the word of the Lord, we allow ourselves, we open up ourselves and allow God to encounter us. Because when God encounters us, there's always a change. Change for good. Now, I'm already talking about the reasons, which is the fourth one. God encounters us to change us. He encounters us to give us joy, to give us peace, to transform us, to uplift us, to liberate us. He encounters us to grant us salvation. God encounters us to comfort us. There are many people who are broken. He encounters us to console us. He encounters us to guide us, to direct us, to show us the path of life, the path of justice, the path of happiness, the path of abundance. He encounters us for positivity. God will never encounter you to destroy you. He encounters us to grant us understanding, deliverance, and freedom. Now, if we encounter the Lord, sometimes people may get confused about this encounter because there are so many encounters. Just as we say, there are so many noise in this world. But I believe that there's only one voice, but there are so many noises. I call it a voice because it speaks of love. There are noises everywhere. Noise is coming from bitterness, toxicity, prejudice, envy, jealousy, unemployment, ambition. Name them. There are so many noises coming from procrastination, pessimism, relativism, modernism, materialism. Name them. There are so many noises. But there's only one voice, and that voice, sometimes we get confused because there are so many noises coming from the internet, from peer pressure, and all that. And that's why it's important that we become the Andrew and the ally to one another. There are many times that certain things happen in your life, you don't understand why it happened or how it actually happened. This is where we need one another. But how can we help other people to understand their encounter if we did not first have an encounter with Jesus? And this is why it's important for us to open up ourselves and encounter Jesus so that we may become God's instrument in helping others to understand their own individual, peculiar, unique encounter with God. Look at the role that Eli played in the life of Samuel. There are so many young people who are confused today. They need direction. There are so many erroneous ideologies and orientations flying around in the social media. The young people of this day need a lot of direction and guidance so that they can encounter God even in their daily experiences. And this is the responsibility of the parents, of their guardian, and of course, us who are religious leaders. Look at the role that Andrew played in the life of his brother. When Andrew and his companion discovered Jesus, they could not keep that joy to themselves. 
Andrew went back home and called his brother, Simon Peter, and said, come, we have found the Messiah. We have to become the Andrew. We have to guide other people to Jesus. Because every experience we have is meant to lead us closer to God, not away from God. But most times, because we are overwhelmed by our own experiences, we lose the lesson from that experience. And that's why we need Andrew. So you can be the Andrew. I can be the Andrew. You can be the ally. I can be the ally. But remember that charity begins at home. Let us begin from our families to direct one another to God. Because if my family is good and your family is good, I think the whole world will be good. May God bless each and every one of us today that we may encounter him. And may this encounter bring transformation, joy, happiness in our lives. I will tell God about you.